Hello and welcome to another episode of Through an Opaque Lens with me, Niall Murphy. And it is the 20th of June, 2024. So happy solstice, or at least solstice eve, as it is. Um, for you poor buggers still stuck up there in the far north of the world with your four hours of daylight more than me. Although it's nice and hot here, that's the thing. I'm not sure nice really, it's nice in the shade, but in the sun it's actually pretty stifling for me at the moment and I'm sweaty, Betty Swallocks and all that. So, being as it's some um, solstice, I've noticed that an act of desecration happened um, recently. Just Stop Oil decided to spray paint Stonehenge orange. And I found out about this and um, I was furious. There they were with their canisters and I was looking at those canisters and thinking about what great um, blunt instruments of instant justice they would be. I'm um, glad I wasn't there. I would have really, really lost my rag actually. But I'm not condoning that anyone does anything violent or destructive. Um, that's the thing, because uh, it's bad to do that. It's not big and it's not clever. But I tell you, it did actually, um, you know, how could I say, I could feel, uh, I could feel rage uh, boiling in me when I saw this. So I'm gonna go over to a quick clip of that and you can see for yourself. See you at the other end. Well, there you go. I tell you, I'm absolutely sick of Just Stop Oil at this point. I'm sick of all these um, offshoots of all these green movements. And I've come to the conclusion that, you know, I think there should be really seriously harsh penalties out there for anyone who desecrates high art, high culture, anything that's considered to be ancient or sacred, um, whether, you know, pagan sites and, of course, also other religious buildings. I'm even going to include mosques in there too, right? Because I'll tell you why. Um, one thing for sure is there are certain levels of gratuitous poor taste that one should never, ever um, stoop to. And that is that, like, you know, even if, I, even if I think that Islam or Islamism in the UK is actually something to, com to, to concern oneself with or worry about, um, I would never, ever consider the idea of putting rashes of bacon outside a mosque, just generally because it's disrespectful. And of course, you know, any, um, if I got consequences, I'd be asking for it. So I, it's not something I would do. Likewise, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't dress up like the devil and find some girly to dress up with the devil and perform um, some sort of um, as your father ritual outside a church, because again, disrespectful. And I honestly think that, yeah, these ancient stones are a connection to the ancient landscape of England. And, um, you know, this just like, I know a lot of people are saying that it's important for England to hold on to its Christian values, but I also think it's important for Britain to respect its prehistory and its pre-Christian stuff, the ancient pagan stuff that goes back there with it as well. And this is desecration as far as I'm concerned. Now, of course, the greenies who done that will say, oh, it's okay because the paint was made of cornstarch. <laughs> oh, that's all right then, is it? Just because it doesn't harm the environment and just because it can be washed off with rain, you desecrated an ancient sacred monument. And I'd like to know what um, those, uh, what was it, Arthur Pendragon and his, his uh, degenerate bunch of pisshead brew crew war band would, like, would do. If you were in their company, they'd probably beat you to death for doing what you did. So you're very lucky that you were there two or three days earlier and you weren't beaten to death by these people because you're going to piss off a lot of people by doing that. You're going to piss off a lot of people on the political left by doing that. Just stop oil. Um, you are making more enemies than you are making friends. And by doing things like this, you are shooting yourself so much in the foot, you might as well be machine gunning yourselves in the head at this point. This is, the, this is wrong, this is just completely, I don't know, sacrilegious, and this is utter desecration of the worst kind. I go, uh, well, when I was in England, you know, I got Avebury, I was an Avebury regular. If I saw any members of Just Stop Oil doing that, I would physically stop them. I would physically stop them doing that. And I would be so angry at them, I'd, I'd scare the shit out of them. I wouldn't, you know, 
I mean, I tried to contain myself enough so that I didn't, um, you know, break the law, you know, because I'm not, I'm not a violent person. But my God, I would feel it was my duty to stop them doing that. I do. Because this is utterly wrong. In the name of saving the earth, they are destroying art. They are desecrating ancient monuments. They are doing, they are behaving like the Philistines. And this is just completely wrong. You don't go doing stuff like this. You don't sort of attack our ancient cultural heritage like that. This is completely, utterly wrong. You're not going to make any friends. You're not going to win anyone to your cause. You're just going to alienate yourself from everyone by doing that. You wouldn't graffiti the pyramids. And Stonehenge is just as important in the world as the pyramids, as is Gobekli Tepe, as a, you know, you've got that Mexican pyramid with the steps, and I think one American woman went and walked up there, and the Mexicans were absolutely furious at her because you're not, you're not supposed to even walk up there, right? That's the thing. Um, so you don't, you've got to respect these things. And so I was absolutely, you know, infuriated by it. But you know what happened to these people? They'll probably just get a slap on the wrist. That's all they'll get. Personally, I think anyone who um, desecrates high art, high culture, you know, anyone who, um, who, you know, stops people from moving in any of these protests, desecrates, um, you know, our heritage like that, anyone who um, does anything, I think there should be a minimum mandatory sentence of five years for people like this. And I think there should be no parole, there should be no suspended sentence, there should be no warning, don't do it again, no chance to do it a second time, no shorted, shortened sentence for good behaviour, and it should be it you know, in for five, in for a five stretch. That'll set a good example to people not to do things like this. You know, you want to, um, you want to make the world a better place. This isn't how you go about it because you're just going to alienate yourselves from a lot of people. Right, so yeah, happy summer solstice and I hope that um, this video as I'm recording it on the 20th and summer solstice has not happened yet. I am interested and I'm going to be looking out to find out on social media and elsewhere what people who go to Stonehenge for solstice, as they will be doing over the next couple of days, find out what their opinions of this will be and um, see what goes on. Because the thing is, yes, right, that a lot, a lot of the people in the counterculture, you know, are, that I kind of feel like I've broken and free from um, are definitely of the political left, definitely of the socialist persuasion, a lot of them. Um, and, uh, you know, so, well, they're, but they're not going to be friends of Just Stop Oil anymore. They're going to hate them for doing this because they're alienating pretty much their own kind, their own cause. This is what they're doing. It's just like the uh, split that I kind of see with the uh, over Israel and Palestine. You've got a bunch of um, blue-haired zealot students out there that are trying to say that October the 7th never happened. But then so a lot of the victims of October the 7th were psytrancers. You know, and um, these people, you know, probably would go to the same um, colleges and universities as those people who say it never happened. So this is the thing. This is a good example of the loony left eating itself like it always ends up doing, right? Now, of course, juxtapose this and these two Just Stop Oil people who are probably only going to get a small slap on the wrist, you know, with um, what's going to be going on on July the 27th in London, there's going to be another Patriot March, the one that the, the media tried to say was far right and turned out that it was very well behaved. There was only two arrests and one of them was from a counter protest. In fact, most of the trouble happened on the counter protest, uh, which never came into contact with the main protest. And there was no, I, you know, there was a lot of people, Sikhs, you know, Persian Iranians who are not, um, you know, not aligned with the regime of Iran and there was uh, black people, there was all sorts of people there and they were all welcomed and there was no racism towards any of these people when they were there. And um, it went very well and they took their litter with them and left uh, Westminster uh, Parliament Square completely clean like most of the lefty protesters never do, right? And they've got another one coming up on, um, on uh, July the 27th. And what happens? Well, Tommy Robinson, the organiser of that event, has had a dossier created by Hope Not Hate um, uh, you know, an organisation that basically uses Orwellian language to name itself because um, it's full of hate and it's hopeless, right? Um, the dossier to the government and as a result a civil lawsuit will be um, against uh, Tommy Robinson for contempt of court for, um, you know, for releasing a documentary that he was not supposed to release. Well, he didn't release it. It was leaked to America and the, the leak has released it in America and he didn't have anything to do with it, but they're still going to try and stitch him up and probably throw him away for two years. While those two people have just stopped oil, um, who desecrated an ancient sacred monument, will probably only get a slap on the wrist.
right? Now, whatever you think of Tommy Robinson, whether you think he comes with baggage or whether you think that he's a, he really is a Trojan horse for the far right and he's actually only pretending not to be, you know, at the moment, I don't know, you can have your own opinion. Um, uh, as I say, from my observations, I don't find him to be as bad as they make him out, but I can understand how he plays the role of an enemy of the state while um, there are uh, there is a status quo to be preserved, even if it's a dying status quo. And even if we are living in a world where there's a bunch of people who are clinging to power and clinging to whatever they can, um, even though they're moribund and they're on their way out, that's the thing. So this is happening in the UK. When I look at the continent, when I look at Europe, and you see a bunch of um, you know more right-wing populist parties through the proportional representation system that they have there, rather than the first-past-the-post system that we have in the UK, um, and you see things happening in Belgium and Netherlands and France and Germany, right? What do I see happening there? Well, a variety of things are happening. You know, you're getting people from all over the political right, from the centre right, the moderate right. Um, to probably uh, the far right as well. Um, is there a danger of a far right problem forming on the continent of Europe? I would say there's more of a danger of it on the continent of Europe than there is in the UK. Not just because the first past the post system means that um, Britain's going to have the worst lefty government of all with them, Keir Stalin in charge for uh, five years or anything like that. Not just because of that. <clears throat> but because Britain um, has never really had a problem with fascism and, um, you know, there's people out there um, trying to say that, um, I think it was Michael Heseltine, you know, <laughs> yeah, remember him from the Tory days, he used to call him Tarzan, yeah, he's now comparing Nigel Farage to Oswald, Oswald Mosley and Enoch Powell. And I don't um, think, from what I can see, that he is. I think he's a lot more moderate than that. And from what I've learnt, um, uh, he has actually done everything he could to expunge all the far-right loonies from his political organisation and vet them to make sure that he doesn't have any. Right, you know, to the point where a lot of people on the right kind of think that Nigel Farage is a wet and is too moderate. And that's the thing that I see. This kind of smearing um, of him and uh, this sort of selective and not very, not very impartial treatment that the BBC has given him, despite the fact that um, Ofcom says that they have to be impartial, um, is really clear and really obvious at the moment. Um, now, one of the things that he said recently, um, and I found this out today just before I made this video, is that he um, said that he would um, make sure that no one in his party, if he was in government, would be involved in the World Economic Forum, that he'd want Britain to leave the World Economic Forum. Now, of course, that could be an empty promise. That could be paying lip service to something. Um, that could be whatever, you know, because politicians, they, they're like that. But the fact that a politician actually fucking said that is very significant, whether he does it or not. The seeds have been sown. And as V from V for Vendetta once said, ideas are bulletproof. So that's an idea that's out there now in the mainstream political consciousness that leaving the World Economic Forum is something that Nige suggested. So that's good enough for me. Whether you like him or not, that's another thing. You, whatever your political persuasion is one way or the other, that is actually, you know, just uh, bear that in mind. But the rest of Europe, on the other hand, with the AFD in Germany, with, um, you know, uh, I suppose what you'd say with Le Pen in France, although from what I hear, Marine Le Pen <coughs> is economically more to the left of Nigel Farage and um, is trying to distance herself from her father's past right to the point where she fired her own dad from the party. And, um, you know, she's not, she's not claim, she's claiming that she's a moderate now when it comes to stuff like this. Well, I suppose we'll see. Time will tell. The AFD in Germany, well, I've heard a lot of, um, I've heard Christine Anderson speaking um, and I actually like what she says, I find it very difficult to disagree with her but at the same time being a new party in a proportional representation system that she exists in, um, she's having a few problems with a few hardliners I suppose and um, you know right to the point where even Nige thinks they're a little bit of a sketchy party which is um, you know quite interesting when you think about it. and. Um, well, the truth of the matter is that if we have this issue in, um, you know, in European politics, Europe has a history um, where there is a possibility that something far right could come along. 
And I would hope <clears throat> that enough people, you know, in the political centre and the right, and even in the moderate left, the, the people in the left who are not collectivists, not wokies and stuff like that too, I hope that all of these people will be worth the consciousness and the, um, you know, the awakenedness, if you like, to be able to see this through and make sure that this is the case, that this doesn't happen. Because um, it has happened in Europe before. It's much more likely to happen in Europe than it is to happen in um, Britain. Right, That's, and it has always been like that. So we shall see, we shall see. But it could be a problem reaction solution that they've been working on for a long time. It could be that they're making us go so far to the left that it causes everyone who disagrees with them to bring this populist uprising up, you know. And then, it, and, and if it turns out that only the far right listen to people's woes and they hijack everything, then the far left can come along and say, look, we warned you, without actually anyone, you know, cottoning on or not many people cottoning on to the fact that the far left created the far right, just as some kind of Machiavellian political game that they wish to play. And that's the concern that we're dealing with, I think, when we're dealing with the ruling classes, when we're dealing with psychopaths, because that's the kind of game that they would want to play. And um, that's what I see. So if there ends up being a far right um, where that becomes powerful or significant in any European country, I reckon, it, you know, blame the far left for creating it, because action, equal opposite reaction, I think that's what they're pushing for. Now, a lot of people who are uh, quite low in consciousness will um, fall for that, you know, but then, you know, a lot, of the, a lot of the normies do tend to fall for stuff like that. But, you know, with me, having this kind of uh, longer now perspective, as I like to call it, um, I realise that we have gone through a political flippening, and as I said previously, if I was to go back to the 1990s, I would be much more aligned with the left than I am with the right now. Um, you know, back then, purely because, not because I really even believe in the concept of left and right. I think of this as a very one-dimensional way of looking at the world. My attitude towards um, politics is, is it individualist or collectivist? Is it one size fits all, we have to do this for, um, for everyone has to conform to this sort of way because Tony Blair says so, and we have to have one size fits all policies because um, you know we're all fungible, we're all part of a collective and no one, has, no one can be different because that's not allowed. Or do we think the sovereignty of the individual is what matters most above all else and every individual's life has value and the best um, you know, and most visionary individuals that are allowed to flourish might actually contribute something good to this world. That's a better way of looking at the world. Authoritarian versus libertarian. You know, and um, collectivism and authoritarianism usually go hand in hand. Whether it's left or right means nothing to me. Because when you get to the extreme left and the extreme right and it becomes collectivist and it becomes authoritarian, you end up with the same thing. It's just that different means are used to achieve it. So if we ended up with a problem in the future, right, where the far left, by the nature of um, suppressing people, did actually create a populist revolt that was then subverted by a far right Trojan horse, well, these are the games they play. This is what they like to do. And um, we've seen this before and we'll see it again probably, because that's the way it goes. So I don't know, all I know that at the moment there is some kind of political civil war that is going on, whether it's engineered or not, I don't know. I mean, a lot of people out there think that the, um, the elites that run the world are super omnipotent, omniscient, clever, Machiavellian psychopaths, right? But I have uh, begun to believe that less and less and less over time. I now believe that they're stupider than they used to be, that since the, um, you know, we are sinking into some sort of idiocracy world, they are becoming dumber. And according to uh, Professor Edward Dutton, um, what's happened is that rather than having the, the smartest people running everything at the moment, um, middle class midwits pretty much have taken over a lot of the institutions and as a result the average IQ of the elites has gone down and um, these people uh, are, are less visionary and they're more into ideological conformity and as a result the people who run the world are not as bright as they used to be but they are hiding behind more advanced tech than was available at the time and this tricks and dupes people into thinking that they're bigger and more malevolent than ever when in actual fact they're running scared and they're probably committing evil and malevolence out of desperation more than anything else because they're losing control of everything. 
you know, and um, I think that at the moment, the way things are, you know, I can certainly say this about Britain, the upper classes are remnants of empire, and having lost empire, the remaining few moneyed people in there, the pure plutocrats that are still there, have become kleptocrats, and they are basically stealing from everyone else, um, and want to run off with it while just leaving um, Britain just to become a wasteland, and I kind of think that that is what is going on. I don't think they're, they're doing this out of, um, malevolence i don't think they're doing this out of machiavellianism i think they're doing this out of desperation more than anything else right and the seesaw left right extreme left extreme right political thing that is going on in europe at the moment i think is uh on one hand it looks like a hegelian dialectic create an extreme left in order to get the people as a counterpoise to create an extreme right um you know or maybe Maybe no one is actually in control of any of this at the moment. I have to wait for this bike to go by. A bit noisy. Oh my God, it's quite a farty sounding bike, that one. It's not much different from being in Costa Rica in that sense. My God. Anyway, uh, yeah, so I don't know really at this moment whether this is anything other than a sort of a natural process of physics, if you like, like physics, you know, Newton's law. Um, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. I don't know. But I do know that at some point um, entropy has to set in and somehow um, a centre ground has to be found again. And um, it will be interesting to see how that will go. But as I say, what do I see It's going to happen this time next year? This time next year there will be a lot more politically right-wing parties in Europe, running Europe. There will probably be conflict between um, the political classes and um, a lot of them will be just, you know, up yours to the to the uh, World Economic Forum. Europe itself, the European Parliament, the European project will be very split. Um, you know, uh, Ursula von der Leyen, usurper in charge of an anti-democratic system, will probably be trying to sanction half of Europe and there will be serious, serious revolts against that when that happens. And Britain will be an outlier hermit state, you know, an outcast state, the only loony lefty state left in Europe. And Britain will, I mean, America will have Donald Trump. And if he comes over and does a state visit, he'll meet the king. And then he'll go for a drink with Nigel. <laughs> Probably snub Keir Starmer. That'd be interesting to see. Um, be interesting to see if that actually, I reckon that's going to happen. Not only do I reckon that's going to happen, but I reckon that the um, gutter tabloid press and the mainstream media will make such a big deal out of it. Scandal and all of that. Trump snubs Prime Minister and uh, hangs out with fascists. They'll say something like that, won't they? <laughs> yeah, you watch. It's going to be interesting to see how the future is going to go. It makes good comedy when I actually think about it, man. You know? <laughs> so we shall see how it goes. In the meantime, I hope, right, that, um, how would I say, the people, um, you know, who may make pilgrimages to the stone circles, whether it be Stonehenge, whether it be Avebury, whether it be any of these uh, places. Um, I want to, I hope they have a good one, this solstice, and I hope, right, that they all unite against Just Stop Oil. Because as I say, the people on the far lefty causes that exist at the moment, whether they be the Greens, whether they be the blue-haired flipping Wokies, whether they be the um, bourgeois bohemians of Islington, Portland, or, you know, places like that. Whether they be the mainstream media, right? Um, and whether they're even in the UK, whether they be the new Labour government. I want to see them in fighting. I want to see them um, falling out with each other. I want to see them eating themselves. And I want to see the whole thing becoming such an embarrassment that they lose all their credibility. And I want them all to alienate themselves from each other. I think we're at that point now where we can just let them let them destroy their own credibility. Probably don't even need to fight them at this point, you know. That's the thing. And that's uh, the way it's going. So, you know, um, as I say, if you poor buggers haven't worked out how to leave, if you are staying and fighting, I hope there's something worth fighting for. And, um, you know, otherwise I think the best thing to do is just leave the Western world to just, uh, you know, to go. I think it's gone. I think it's been destroyed by too many selfish kleptocrats over the years, by too many megalomaniacs over the years. And how far does it go back? It probably goes back to Edward Bernays, the man who invented the propaganda that was used now in adverts um, to um, manipulate our desires for shit we don't need. 
which destroyed America pretty much from the inside. And then after World War II spread to Europe, well, you know, I think now this is, uh, this is coming home to roost. So we shall see what happens. I'll be interested in your opinions. Sorry if I'm too much of a lazy bastard to reply, but comment anyway, like anyway, it helps the algorithm. And not enough people share my videos, not enough people post my videos on social media or share them. Not enough people tell other people about my videos, not enough people comment. And I have to get, you know, say, get your ass into gear and bloody well get on with it. I have to say to everyone, don't I, eh? <laughs> right, I should leave it at that then. See you later, alligator. See you soon, baboon. If you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And while you're at it, check out all our social media links. Please help this channel grow. Your help will be appreciated.